Alley Cats and New Viewers. So today is part uno of my November 2014 favorites. And this month I'm kind of focusing on what I'm thankful for. Especially because, you know, it's Thanksgiving this month if you live in America. And I really haven't been thankful enough because there's been so much stress going on in my life. So I'm going to focus on thanking people who have really helped me along the, this crazy journey in YouTube. So all the YouTube channels I give shoutouts to this month will be people that you've heard me talk about before but they've made a huge impact on my life. Just a little warning. And as always, if you want to check out any of the movies, TV shows, games, or music I list, it's in the description box down below so check them out and you might find something you love. So let's just get started. My first, uh, my first, it's not my first, my favorite CD of this first half of the month, there we go, is Taylor Swift's 1989. Now, a lot of people were like, oh, she's not country anymore, blah, blah, blah. Or they just hate Taylor Swift in general. It's okay if you hate Taylor Swift. I love Taylor Swift because her songs are so relatable. And again, this fourth album is a masterpiece. I love pretty much every song on here. Bad Blood is my favorite. It's been perfect for situations I'm dealing with right now. I've quoted it a bunch on social media. So, <laughs> Bad Blood is perfect. But I love this CD. And, you know, it's great if you have girl or guy problems. Because I know guys listen to Taylor Swift as well. It's good for if you have friend issues or if you just want to dance. This is perfect. Perfect. My favorite songs on this are Bad Blood, Blank Space, Out of the Woods, and Shake It Off. So, yeah, those are, my, those are my favorites. But the whole CD is incredible. And I got the special edition that comes with the Polaroids. And it's just amazing. So if you like Taylor Swift, definitely pick it up. And if you didn't like her previously because maybe it was a little too country, she's totally pop now, so check her out. But if you don't like Taylor Swift, you're not going to like this. Just saying. So that's my favorite CD of the first part of November. My favorite book now is Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. Now Gillian Flynn wrote Gone Girl, which I fell absolutely in love with. So I wanted to get her previous two novels. This is her debut novel. And this is so good. It's very, very dark and twisted though. So it's kind of, it's graphic. All of Gillian Flynn's novels so far have been graphic. But it's about this woman named Camille Preaker. She just got a psych ward. And she's a reporter for a local newspaper in Chicago. But she's sent back to her hometown to investigate the murders of two preteen girls. And after that, things get twisted and nasty. And, oh, uh, it's disturbing. But it's so good. If you like mystery thriller novels and you can handle graphic brutality sometimes, this is the book for you. It's not very big. I haven't finished it yet, but what I've read so far is amazing. Jillian Flynn is an excellent writer, so definitely check her out. She's just so worthy of reading her novels. It's just amazing. But, like I said, it is very graphic. Both this and Gone Girl I've been, so I'm assuming Dark Places will be as well. But it's definitely worth a read if you can handle it, because she's a master at writing. She is a master. So, now we're moving on to the movies I love this month. I can't show you them because I Netflixed all of them. But the first movie up is Edge of Tomorrow. Now Edge of Tomorrow stars Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt and basically they're at war with aliens that have invaded Earth and Tom Cruise's character is a... can't think of the word. But he's high up in the military. But he actually has never been in combat. So he's sent to the front lines. He doesn't want to go in the front lines. And they have these awesome exoskeletons they wear in battle because I guess it's the future. They never really specified. But the thing is, he kills this alpha alien, which is not a spoiler, is at the very beginning of the movie. And he learns that every time he dies, he resets the day, kind of like Groundhog Day. So he can relive the day and learn what to do to better help his squad with the battle. And he meets this woman, of course, played by Emily Blunt. She is awesome, though. She's a badass. They call her the full metal bitch. And... She's just an awesome character. I'm, I've never been a huge fan of Emily Blunt, but she does an amazing job in this film. So does Tom Cruise. So if you like sci-fi action and adventure movies, definitely check out Edge of Tomorrow because it was so underrated. Didn't get the love it deserved at the box office, but it's an incredible film. Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt are fantastic. It's got Bill Paxton in it. If you like Bill Paxton, I don't know. 
and it's just totally fun to watch and I highly recommend it I mean it's great it's really really great I loved it I just I loved it I was surprised at how much I love this film next up is The Normal Heart this is an HBO movie but it's so fantastic but since it is an HBO movie I have to warn you that it is quite graphic at some points there's nudity sex scenes cursing you know you see some you know bodily images gross images but it's basically about the AIDS epidemic when it first started in 1981 this is based off a play of the same name and this was directed by Ryan Murphy who created Glee and American Horror Story and Ryan Murphy is a genius a twisted genius but he's a twist he's a good genius and this film is just amazing it stars Mark Ruffalo Matt Bomer who is gorgeous have you seen that guy's eyes Look up Matt Bomer's eyes. <laughs> Taylor Kitsch, another gorgeous guy. Jim Parsons, he's Sheldon from Big Bang Theory. And Julia Roberts, they're all amazing. And mostly focuses on Mark Ruffalo and Matt Bomer's characters. But it's so powerful. I was sobbing by the end of this movie. It's that powerful and that effective. Of course, this is a very tough subject to breach, so you might not be able to handle it if you're not into the kind of medical you know history kind of stuff but if you can handle it it's definitely worth a watch it's very very just it just hits you in the heart like it's very informative and very powerful and it's just a really important film to see if you can handle it this film I really really enjoyed which I was actually surprised I enjoyed this as much as I did was Dylan Dog Dead of Night I watched this around Halloween and it's perfect it's so bad it's good it's a very cheesy b-movie type of movie but it stars Brandon Routh, who played Superman in Superman Returns, and he plays Ray Palmer in Arrow right now. It's got Sam Huntington, who was um, Josh in the U.S. version of Being Human. He is the best part of the movie, by the way. He gets all the funnies, and he's just hilarious. I love him. And it also has Tay Diggs. He plays the head of the vampires in this film. But Brandon Routh is Dylan Dog, and this is based off the popular Italian comic book series, but he plays Dylan Dog, who is kind of like a paranormal investigator, but he's focusing on human PI work right at the moment. But he gets a call from a woman whose father has been murdered by what seems to be a werewolf. So he gets back into the supernatural kind of side of PI work, and he has an assistant, Marcus. And, you know, he's human at first, but Marcus gets killed, not a spoiler, and turns into a zombie. And this is when he gets funny, okay? This is when Sam Huntington is allowed to bring his humor to the film. Which he was funny in Being Human. He's just a funny, funny actor. Love Sam Huntington. And, you know, it just focuses on vampires, werewolves, zombies, stuff like that. It's so cheesy, so schlocky, but it's so good. If you like sci-fi B-movies, Dylan Dog Dev Night is perfect for you. The effects are cheesy. The acting is actually pretty good for this kind of film. <laughs> but the main reason to watch this is actually Sam Huntingdon because I mean you'll laugh so much because of his character. It's amazing. Amazing. So it's a perfect B movie, okay? If you haven't watched it and you like the B movies, definitely give Dylan Dog Dead of Night a watch. It's it's worth it. And the final movie is, which has been my favorite these past few weeks is Begin Again. Now, Begin Again stars Keira Knightley, Mark Ruffalo, and Adam Levine in his acting debut, which he did a fantastic job, actually, for his acting debut. And the story is basically Keira Knightley's character is a, is a songwriter. She sings, but she doesn't do it in public. And her boyfriend is played by Adam Levine. He's totally a dick. But he's a very talented singer. So they're, they're a team. But then he becomes famous, and he moves off. He dumps her. So she goes to a bar one night with her friend because her friend drags her along, makes her sing on stage, and Mark Ruffalo's character, who is a washed up A&R executive, who has basically been fired from his own record company that he started, he sees her and he's just like, this woman's got talent, I've got to sign her. So they immediately team up and they just go around the city and record songs and it's just wonderful. It's not a musical, but it does have a lot of music in it and it's just the performances are great by all the actors. The songs are very catchy. It's got one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard in a film. And the cool thing is the soundtrack is sung all by the actors themselves. Kira Knightley, Adam Levine, CeeLo Green who has a cameo in the film. It's wonderful. I love it. I love it. It's very heartwarming. There's a few moments where it's heartbreaking. It's inspiring. 
it's just amazing. And it was directed by John Carney, who directed once his only other film, which I really want to watch. But Begin Again, definitely watch it. Another underrated film, but it's fantastic. I loved it. Love, 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 loved it. Now, moving on to TV, the only TV show I watched new this past month or so has been Jane the Virgin. At first, I didn't like the show the first episode, but I kept watching and I fell in love with it. It's very humorous, and you know me, I don't really laugh at a lot of comedic TV shows, but this one's got heart and it's about family, so the funny moments punctuate those familial issues perfectly. And the story is basically about Jane Villanueva, and you know, she's 23, she's going to college, she goes to the gynecologist, <laughs> sorry guys, one day just for a routine checkup, but her doctor, who found out that her father is now marrying her lover, which this is based off a Spanish telenovela by the way, so there's a lot of this kind of stuff in it. She gets artificially inseminated. She's never had sex, which is why it's called Jane the Virgin. She's engaged to this really bland guy that she needs to dump right away. And he's like, I don't want this baby. So she finds out that the father of her unborn child is actually an ex-boyfriend of hers. Which his ex-boyfriend is really gorgeous. His name is Raphael. She really belongs with him. But he's married and there's just a lot of issues going on. There's murders going on in this show. There's family drama. There's so much going on in this show. And that's to be expected if it's based off a Spanish telenovela. But it's very, very heartwarming and I just love it. Definitely check it out. Especially if you thought it was maybe like a chick show or something. It's not. It's perfect for everyone. Even my dad gets into it. So, And it's kind of funny. My mom and dad are like, Oh, Abyss, this person that murdered them. Oh, she belongs to Raphael, not with Michael. Blah, blah, blah. It's kind of weird. But it's a really good show, so I highly suggest checking it out. And now for the games I enjoyed this month, the first one, let me get it, is Theater of the Final Fantasy Curtain Call for the 3DS. This is a must-own if you have a 3DS, and if you enjoy rhythm games or are a Final Fantasy fan. Now, you don't have to be a Final Fantasy fan to play this, but, you know, it's a nice treat if you are, because you pick, it's kind of like got RPG light elements, but it's mainly a rhythm game. But you get to pick a team of four classic Final Fantasy characters from basically every installment of the game. You unlock more characters as you play, though. And they're so cute. They're little chibi versions, and they're so adorable. And it's a beautiful game. The backgrounds are gorgeous while you're playing the rhythm game. You want to look at the backgrounds, but you're focusing on the rhythm, so it's kind of distracting. But it's gorgeous. It's an easy game to play, but it's difficult to master. And it's just wonderful. The rhythm... Uh, action of the game is perfectly suited for th the 3DS and all the songs are amazing. There's 221 songs so you're getting a lot of bang for your buck and you know it's it's got music from basically every Final Fantasy game that's ever been released and everyone knows Final Fantasy has some of the best music in the gaming industry. So definitely pick this up if you're a fan of rhythm action games or are a fan of Final Fantasy or if you've never given a rhythm action game a try, pick it up. It's really, really good. I swear. It's really good. It's really fun, really addictive, and you can play it either for a few minutes or a few hours. It's just a perfect pick-up-and-play game. Highly recommend it. And the second game I've been enjoying this month is actually a digital download, so I can't show it to you, but it's Sunset Overdrive, an Xbox One exclusive, and it's just so much fun. It's by, the, it's by Insomniac Games, who made the Spyro the Dragon games, the Ratchet and Clank games, the Resistance games, and it's crazy. It's kind of like a mixture of Jet Set Radio or Jet Grind Radio, whatever you want to call it. Saints Row, Infamous, and some adult Russian Clank, I would say. Because this is a very adult game. It's rated M, it's got cursing and gore, and yeah, you can turn the cursing and gore off, but what's the point? It's an M rated game. You should know what to expect. But it's just so funny. You it's so customizable. You can make your character look absolutely insane. Like, you can make females have facial hair. You can put makeup on males. You can dress them like crazy people. I made mine look good, okay? I can't make my character look crazy. But it's just amazing. And all the characters in the game are really weird. And it's just such a colorful, you know, happy-looking game. I mean, it's so drenched in color. It kind of cheers you up. 
And it's just so much fun. It can be quite difficult at first, though, because you have to grind. And I'm not talking about, like, RPG grinding. You seriously had to grind on rails and wires to, you know, traverse the city, get style points, and to defeat enemies. Because if you stand still, you're going to be dead very, very quickly. So you have to grind around the city to defeat enemies. And you get these awesome weapons, like the Overcompensator, which looks like an, an obscene object. But it's really awesome. And the Tea and Teddy, which shoots exploding teddy bears. I love it! And there's also, like, a gun that's very reminiscent of the dubstep gun in Sandra 4, where she's final records out. There's just so many options. I could go on and on about Sunset Overdrive, but it's really fun. Is it as great as it was hyped up to be? No. But it's still a pretty fun game. And I love it. So, if you haven't gotten it yet, and you're interested in it, in it, in it I say pick it up. Because it's really fun. If you're looking for a fun game that will distract you, definitely pick it up. And if you're a fan of Insomniac's previous games, of course, pick it up. So, yeah. Those are the games I love this month. Now, moving... moving? <laughs> moving on to music. I was trying to combine music and moving. All the songs I like are listed down below in the playlist. Lo the playlist. Playlist in the description box down below. Like always, I would love it if one of you would listen to the songs. <laughs> I just love Dispro and my love of music, so... I do it anyway, just for fun. But I love to listen to songs, find new songs, and share them with the world. So let me know if you listen to any of them, and if you like them, just let me know. And next up, the last part of this video is actually the YouTube shoutouts. And these are, of course, people that have inspired me and helped me along the way, and are just amazing, amazing people. It is very, very hard to choose five for this episode, and then five for the next installment. But I chose, so... Here we go. First off, I have to give a huge shout out to my boo boo, my girl, my wonderful, wonderful, wonderful girl friend. Not actually my girlfriend, but my girl who's a friend. Get it right. Get it out of your mind, people. Kelly, or Mrs. Violence, as she's more commonly known. She is an amazing friend. Oh my gosh, she's helped me through so much lately, and she's so sweet. I'll, I adore her. I adore her. And she's got an amazing channel. She does Mail Mondays, which is where she opens mail. She gets so much cool mail. Oh my gosh, girl. I'm jealous. Not really. Just a little bit. But she gets a lot of cool mail. She does, like, charity videos. Like, she did the, the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. She did a pie in the face for Operation Supply Drop. She, of course, shows some of her streaming footage, which she has her own live stream. Check it out. Twitch TV slash Mrs. Violence. It's a really fun live stream to watch. It's great to be a part of the Roar Squad. And of course I have to give a shout out real quick to Kat Conti who is also part of Kelly's live stream. Kat is so sweet. She doesn't have her own YouTube channel, I don't believe. If you do Kat, please let me know and I'll link it down below. But Kelly and Kat are both amazing, amazing women and they've helped me so much and they've both inspired me a lot. So thank you so much girls. You have been such a help to me and you're so inspiring, so beautiful and I cherish your friendships, both of you, and I'm so, so, so thankful that I got the pleasure to meet you online. I hope to one day meet you girls in person and give you both really big hugs because I would love to meet you both because, you know, gaming girls got to stick together. But yeah, check out Kelly's channel and live stream. I'll have them both linked in the description box and, you know, tell her Alyssa sent you and tell Kat Alyssa sent you because you know we gotta spread the love we gotta spread the love and next up is another wonderful wonderful woman which we've actually made a name Kelly and I made a name for the three of us but it's Rachel Moore and our name is RKA so use hashtag RKA if you want to talk to the three of us I'm starting it are you are you cool with that Kelly and Rachel let me know <laughs> But Rachel has been such a help. She's given me so many subscribers by just mentioning my name and, you know, showing love and compassion to me. I met her at Indie PopCon. She's so lovely in person. You know, she's she's a doll. She's just amazing. And her videos, she makes like, um, you know, watching Rachel's box, which is male videos. She does reviews. She has her own gaming channel. She does discussion videos. She has a lot of different videos related to the gaming industry and, you know, she's just a beautiful woman inside and out and 
she's just, she's an angel. She's really helped me through a lot. And, you know, I can't thank her enough for that. And, she, again, she is a huge inspiration to me. And, you know, I love you, girl. So, RKA, Rachel Kelly Alyssa. Get it? We're, we're a triumvirate right there. <laughs> but I love, I love Rachel. I love her to death. And the next shout out I have to give is to a girl who I've known for about a year or so, I would say. And her name is Erica Zabo. She, she's just, she's lovely. She's awesome and, you know, she's, her channel's different but in a good way because she does game reviews, anime reviews, she does her weekly vlogs. She does all these different kinds of videos. She does like top five lists or top ten lists, unboxings sometimes. She's just incredible. She's given me a lot of great advice. She actually made the banner on my YouTube home channel page thing. <laughs> I screwed that up. But she made that, which it's really, really beautiful. I love it. And Erica's just a sweetheart, and she's really inspired me. And I know I haven't, you know, been as sociable lately, Erica, but I still love you to death, girl. And I still watch all of your videos, even if I don't always comment. But you're such an inspiration to me, and I love, love, love you. Love you to death, girl. And I love how you're always changing your hair color. I wish I was that brave. But yeah, check her out. She's got a really unique channel. Next up is Nostalgic Dan, and he is such a sweet guy. He usually comments on my videos, and, you know, he does a lot of interesting videos. He likes to get these niche games from, like, Nis America, Atlas, stuff like that. He does unboxings of the collector's editions, which are so much fun to watch because you see what all of the interesting things are in these editions that normally don't get shown on YouTube or whatever. And, you know, he does, he's made like top five lists before and discussion videos. And I just love watching his, vi just watching his videos. And he also does amazing artwork on Society6.com, which I really want to get one of your paintings, but I don't have the money at the moment. But when I get money, I'm going to buy one of your paintings, Dan, because they're amazing. You're talented. Really, really talented. He's really sweet. So go check him out. And the last shout out I have to give is to Steph's 2 Deaf. Steph has been just a wonderful, wonderful woman to me. And she puts out about three videos a month. She usually does her pickups for the month, what she's played the, that month, and then usually like either some gameplay footage that she's captured or a collection video or you know a top five top ten video you know she does really awesome videos they're very high quality she's very professional she's very friendly just check her out she's amazing and she's again a big inspiration all these channels are big inspirations to me and they've opened my horizons and kind of made me want to be better make a better channel. So go check out all these lovely people. If you subscribe to them, tell them Alyssa sent you and that she loves them very much. And I'm going to go now, but if you liked the video, please leave a like. Leave a comment down below and let me know what your favorites have been so far. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet because, you know, Alley Cats are freaking awesome. And we try to have fun on this channel. I try to make it fun. You can laugh at me if you're not having fun. Just laugh at me. But <laughs> subscribe, please. And favorite so your friends and family can see so they can laugh at me too. And share me as long as you do it nicely. And remember, bleh, screwed up. Remember, I love each and every one of you so, so much. And I'm so thankful for each and every one of you. You are the reason I keep doing this. And I'm so thankful for y'all. Peace and kisses.